Good afternoon, folks. We're going to bring together the solar forcing knowledge from the journals and do what climatistas never seem to do, draw conclusions and identify potential solar influence of extreme weather. This week, we had a quintessential candidate. Now, yes, severe storms happen, and while there is no real way to single out any one storm, the devastation that just blasted Houston is a good candidate. For those who have our textbook, you already know that there are clear statistical and mechanistic forcing studies tying increased solar storm activity to thunderstorms, wind, and precipitation, and it is all about atmospheric electricity amplified by that solar energy. Solar flaring, CME impact, geomagnetic storms, all trigger amplification of the electric energy and dynamics of the system. The critical aspect is that the solar energy coming into the Earth system first amplifies the downward current of the global electric circuit, which then amplifies everything here at ground level. You can't introduce electricity into a circuit and not impact the entirety of the circuit, and that is precisely what dozens of studies have shown. The atmospheric pressure, wind, rain, lightning, and overall storm energy, including derechos like what just hit Houston, are all amplified by this solar energy coming down through the circuit. This happens over much shorter time scales than irradiance heating, about 3 to 10 days, which is why at the end of the solar storm last weekend, we said we were in a 10-day alert for severe to extreme weather outbreaks. It happened after only 4 days. This electrodynamic system is what 100% is left out of all weather models, and don't even try to talk to a climate zealot about this. But here's what you need to know. High pressure cells and lows not only spin opposite ways, but the high pressure cells spin outward, and the low cells spin inward. But that's not all. In high pressure, the air descends, and in low pressure, it rises, like a tornado, only slower, and spanning hundreds to thousands of square miles. The impact of the sun on this global electric circuit, which was already well understood, was confirmed just a few months ago in a critical analysis in the journal Space Weather, showing that the CME impact and Forbush decrease directly juice up the atmospheric electricity and the electric circuit up and down movement. Again, this can be solar flare energy, the particles from a coronal mass ejection in the Van Allen belts, or the energy spread globally by auroral outbursts during geomagnetic storms. All of them take the current and amplify it. You could picture these systems speeding up and carrying much more energy. This moves the ambient air, directly modulating the atmospheric pressure confirmed this year, directly impacting thunderstorm cells confirmed again this year, and amplifying rainfall and downdrafts to extreme levels confirmed once again late last year. You're getting the picture, right? A few brave scientists are beginning to go against the grain now and making these same correlations to individual severe outbreaks, breaking down the extremification of weather to levels that cause significant damage. The studies are getting more detailed and they all show the same thing. The sun takes normal weather and makes it extreme. So with record-breaking solar storms last weekend, it would have been strange not to see at least one severe outbreak this week exactly what we saw. And with several days left in the alert window, I wouldn't sleep on the alerts for a coming few days, both in the United States and across the world. Subscribe and I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe everyone.